Hello again. So folks, if you are tuning in now, we started at one and now we're coming back again to try it once more. It was a little bit glitchy in the past stream. Fingers crossed it's going to be okay this time. Uh, today we are chatting with the one and only uh, superpower force of creative nature, Yvonne Drabert, who's also a part of the Lock3 Media team. Uh, yes, they are amazing. She is amazing. But as we know, filmmaking and documentary filmmaking is a team sport, as they pointed out before. But today we're going to chat with her and learn a little bit more about what it's like to do all the things that she does to make these amazing projects happen, such as Striking Balance, a TV show on TVO. Uh, so incredibly beautiful. If you haven't watched it yet, please do turn tune in and give it a go. Uh, but for now, let's try and invite Yvonne back on, see if it's okay. But folks, let me know if it's glitchy. Let us know and we'll see if we can do it another way because I'd rather capture this conversation uh, than have it be something that folks can't understand. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. Well, there you go. It's Tuesday. That happens. So let's go live with Yvonne. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so far, so good, I think. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I How's think that? Better. I think it's better. Yeah. Well, we'll have to start talking to find out, I guess. <laughs> you mean we just stare at each other and like fill the silence, right? <laughs> yeah, our, with our gorgeous faces, for sure. Yes. Okay. So then, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing that you did before. And folks, let us know if it's still glitchy. Okay. All right. Sorry. I mean, I also live in the middle of nowhere, which is maybe something to be noted. We have we have decent internet usually, but uh, I do live on the Bruce Peninsula, and that is maybe one of the magical things about being in documentary film versus you know the fiction film world. I don't have to go into Toronto every day uh, for my job. Um, yeah. So maybe I'll just I'll just tell you a little bit more. Um, so. As I mentioned before, I'm a documentary film and television producer. Um, so as a producer, you're kind of, yeah, one of the uh, one of the, the big brains behind the show. Um, you're working really closely with the director to help ensure that their vision gets out there. But you're also kind of managing all of the uh, admin side of the show. So, you know, making sure that it's financed, um, working with those broadcasters to make sure that we're we're all we all know what story we're telling and where it's going um but uh yeah the other big note is that i work uh in public television uh which is maybe a little different uh than some of the bigger specialty channels so um what that means is that uh i mean and we're also just kind of weirdos we do a lot of the other um, parts of making a film ourselves because we like to do them so i have a background in graphic design um and I do a lot of all the animation and graphic design to do a striking balance uh, and motion graphics. That's all me as well, because I am a design dork and I just love those things. Um, so, you know, if I have to manage, you know, if I have to manage the accountants and whatnot, I kind of get a payoff uh, in the animation department by being able to do that really fun stuff. Um, yeah, so so our work is we do a lot of stuff in house. Um, and we do that because we we like doing those things. We like learning about um you know, doing our own color correction and, you know, how to sound mix properly. And um, in the end, like we create something that, uh, you know, really is <laughs> a, a product of a kind of a unique vision that we have. So it's, uh, it's a really fun thing to uh, put it out there in the world and, and see how people respond. Yeah. Well, oh. People oh, yeah, maybe I'll mention too, just for, for folks who are watching who are maybe interested in um, getting into documentary, my uh, under, I have a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in sculpture, so nothing to do with um, with filmmaking. Um, so if you're kind of thinking about it and you're like, oh, I don't have, you know, a formal education in filmmaking, you know, don't worry about it. Get out there um, and you, you learn so much from being on the ground in film, as I'm sure Mary knows as well. So, yeah. I've done my part behind the scenes for a few, <laughs> a few shoots. Excellent on the smoke machine. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's something. And before I go forward, I, I should uh, publicly congratulate you on the Canadian Screen Award nomination. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got our first Canadian Screen Award nomination, um, the Rob Stewart Award for Best Science or Nature Documentary or Program for Stray Mounts, um, which is the series we um uh, premiered in October of this this past year on TVO. Um, it's a nine-part series on uh, Canada's biosphere regions, which are 
a UNESCO designation um, that says, you know, it's all about communities living and working sustainably. And that's kind of the, the kind of work we're really interested in where, you know, conservation stories, nature stories, but where people are part of the solution. So that's really the kind of work that, that we like to do. And we're, we're just happy because, uh, you know, a lot of filmmaking is toiling in your basement as, uh, as Mary and Anthony know. Uh, so it's really nice just when somebody else uh, kind of enjoys your work <laughs> and you get a little bit of a kudos uh, to see like, oh, other humans are actually watching this. That's great. <laughs> Well, yeah. you, were mentioning, you were mentioning too that, um, and if I'm not coming across very clearly, will you let me know? It's okay, yeah, sure. Uh, you work a little bit, you know, towards the margins, you're independent. Mm -hmm. You choose that way for these problems. There's obviously a trade-off when you do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, as Mary noted, <laughs> yeah, we, we are pretty independent. We work with a usually pretty small crew. Um, so that means a few things. It means that um, we can tell broadcasters, hey, we can make this documentary a bit more cheaply and save you some money and then hopefully encourage them to actually go for the show and, and support us. Um, it means that we all learn a bunch of really cool skills. Um, so I also have a background in being a sound recordist <laughs> and boom operator, uh, even though I'm 5'2", uh, so that's very uh, silly. Uh, but um, so you, you learn a lot of skills, you're able to go you know, more places. For instance, we did um, an episode of Striking Mountains in the Northwest Territories in a flying community. We could only afford to fly in so many people because the cost of getting there was uh, was a lot, so we needed a crew with with lots of skills. Um, the the trade off there is that you get tired, man. <laughs> you know, we shoot a lot of days for our shows, um, and so it it can be a, a tough slog at times. Um, you get to go to a lot of cool places, but sometimes you know work is work, and you just uh, need a little break. Um, so it's harder to take breaks for sure. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit harder to expand your uh, network uh, if you're, you know, spending most of your time, uh, you know, filming in a bog in northern, uh, in the Northwest Territory or something, right? So, so yeah, there's definitely trade-offs, um, but we do have a lot of autonomy um, because of how we work. So we're able to make choices and, and roll with them. And, you know, if we, if we want to film an extra day, we're going to film an extra day because we're going to get, we know the content will be there and it'll be great stuff. Um, but yeah, it's obviously, <laughs> there are certainly trade-offs um, in, in doing your own thing. But I mean, the best part is that, you know, when working the way we do at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's really ours. It's really our, um, our story. Uh, that we're we're telling it's it's a real sense of ownership um and you really get to know the people you're working with um it's not a different crew of 10 people showing up every day it's like you and three other guys <laughs> so you know i'm related to half that well i i work with my husband <laughs> um so you know we're kind of uh, the people that uh, um you know in documentary it's really important to to build those relationships with people um so that they're going to open up to you and be willing to work with you on screen so you know when it's us showing up consistently every day um you know we're we're showing we're just as committed to their work as as they are and sharing their story so anyways a bit of a ramble there but <laughs> excellent ramble <laughs> yeah. and i i hadn't thought about that before the idea that you when you're working so closely with people for better or for worse you know you're bringing your own passion and commitment to the project, which says a lot to the folks you're asking to share with you. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a really big act of trust to, yeah. to work with someone who's making a documentary. You're, you're trusting them with your story, which is, you know, one of the most important things you have in <laughs> yes. your own story, right? Um, luckily, you know, often we're talking to people who are really excited about their work and really passionate about their work. And, and, you know, when you're, when you're making a documentary, um, that's, that's what you want. You want those people who are really um, passionate and excited because that's, that comes across on screen, you know, when they care about what they're doing, like that's, that's gold. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, that is, uh, that, that's what we do. Yeah. You, you build trust, you help them feel 
comfortable enough to. And I know too that uh, a lot of the subjects that you choose to write on aren't always. Well, you you go to interesting and sometimes difficult areas of conversation, um, particularly with, not necessarily that it's political, but you're mm -hmm. focusing and shining a light on the voices that sometimes don't get the attention they deserve. What is it like to sort of put yourself that in that direction, not play it safe all the time? Yeah, I mean, usually we have a bit of a plan <laughs> before we, we ever go anywhere with a camera. Um, we go and we meet the people um, themselves and we talk to them and we spend time with them um, so that we kind of know, you know, when we get into an interview situation, excuse me, or we get into a, a filming situation, roughly the direction they're going to go. Um, and usually for the, the film itself, we've already thought before we shoot anything, we've all, already thought about the rough story that the film's going to follow and, and where those peaks and valleys are going to come um, and where we're going to hit those things that really affect uh, both the viewer's heart and, and the, the people we're working with's heart. So we're, we're usually, usually, not always, um, ready, you know, mentally prepared for the situations um, where, where people are, are really going to gonna gift us a piece of themselves and and go into those really tough times um mm -hmm. i can think of one right now we were talking to someone um about in manitoba about um bovine tb um and they had to uh call their entire herd of cattle which obviously is devastating um but also very important to to manage this disease um but clearly like that's something that would hurt you personally um yes. talking about this this loss not only of life but your livelihood as well um and so we know like it is really a gift um when people are willing to share that with us um and and they are trusting that that we're gonna take their shirt their story and sh help share it in a really respectful way um so there is kind of a really magical <laughs> this is really lame but there is a bit of a magical thing that happens um uh when you're with somebody and they share something like that with you often the people though are sharing it because they want to see change um because uh, it's important to them so so you know, they're going to this hard place that's, that's really emotionally difficult for them um, because they want to help others change or to help other communities or people going through the same thing. Um, so, so really when you're, when you're in those difficult places, um, you're kind of in it together with them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the whole time you're cutting the film and working on the film, you're, you're trying to be respectful of that story and, and take it in a good place um, and help them share it in the way they intended. Um, so there is, yeah, kind of a, a cool relationship that evolves when you, when someone, you know, chooses to go there with you to that really hard place in their life. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it really is a gift. I think we really try to be, um, you know, we, we often get asked for footage and, you know, of a community or an individual and, and that's not something we usually uh, give away or, or, you know, we, we're always really mindful of like, when people agree to work with us, they agree to working with us for a particular film and, and to get a particular message across. Um, and we always need to be mindful about, you know, not sharing footage in a, in a way that would not respect that. Because um, really, like our goal is to respect the people that are in the story and help them tell their story. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. To hear it's someone being like, again, it's the ethical, of storytelling that you don't always hear about and the responsibility you have as the storyteller as the person who's sharing these images and these stories with the world yeah that's very vulnerable to oh, yeah. yeah over to someone um, oh for sure it is a huge act of trust and i you know often a lot of the time you spend with people is just building that relationship so that you can get to that place where they're really comfortable um, sharing their story. Uh, yeah, we never show up on a first visit with cameras blazing. I mean, we, I guess maybe we would do that sometimes if it's like a work environment and they're showing us their, you know, widgets at work or their experiment at the lab or something, but you sh like almost never would we show up with a camera before we've spent time with someone. 
relationship thing. I'm not, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a big one. And so those like that difficult and the work heavy, you know, the emotional piece. But we have a question here from uh, Leanna Keller. What's your favorite part about what you do? Uh, favorite part? Um, we do get to go to cool places. <laughs> we we do get to go to cool places. For instance, um, for Stringy Mountains, we got to, you know, spend, get helicoptered in to the top of a mountain and camp there for four days while people um, did science with, you know, these cute little marmots that are, you know, basically like, you know, just really cute beaver type <laughs> animals. Um, you know, we get to go to cool places for sure. Um, that is definitely, you know, behind the scenes at, you know, the, the big museums, you know, going into their vaults and seeing their, you know, thousands of canoes or whatever. Like those, those things are cool. That is not like, <laughs> I should temper that with like, you know, to get to that place, there's a whole lot of, um, you know, grant writing <laughs> and, and scheduling and stuff before you get to those places. But uh, we definitely do get to go to, you know, be on, you know, cool research boats and stuff like that. So, you know, it's definitely a big, a good payoff for all those days of, you know, typing grant applications and meetings and all of the rest. But uh, yeah, it's definitely like being on location with people doing stuff they love. Like that's the other mm -hmm. thing. Like when people people want to tell you about the work that they're proud of, right? Like that's what, that's the easy part of our job. <laughs> like people generally are really excited um, and interested in the work they're actually doing and want to tell you about it. So like when you find those people that are so excited about their work and they are, they are just so happy to tell you about it. <laughs> and that's when our job is easy. Um, people who like love doing what they do and, and they just love to, to share that. Yeah. Yeah. Loving. Yeah. People, there's always something so about watching someone share what they love, what they're with, with you. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah. Who doesn't find that interesting? Yeah, yeah. And it really comes across, like, um, you know, versus someone who, it, you, you see, we all recognize it on screen. Like, we all can see it as an audience, you know, when, when the person is really interested in what they're doing. So if you're interviewing someone and they're, I don't know, maybe a bureaucrat, <laughs> And this isn't their jam, like you could tell. <laughs> and so you feel that. And so part of, you know, what you learn in experience making documentaries is you really look for those people who are really excited about their work, who are, who are like, just, just can't wait to tell you what they're doing. Um, like, that's who we're always looking for. Um, and those people that are just so keen. So there's often a bit of a weeding out process at the beginning of your doc. Um, you spend, uh, you know, a fair amount of time researching, you know, you're, it's, it's a bit of a marriage, you know, you're going to be working on this thing, if it's a feature length or, or a series, you know, I think we were working on striking balance. I mean, we started working on striking balance, I think in 2014, Teen or something, the first season and interestingly mary was a part of it we we pitched um we pitched a hosted show and we were gonna have mary be the host but they were like ah oh, no host no host and we're like ah oh, we love you mary My we love you <laughs> <laughs> we were sad about it um but you know you spend probably a year maybe a year and a, or more you know researching um coming up with the idea really structuring uh, the doc there's there's a whole lot of work that goes into um planning <laughs> what we call uh so you I, do we want to talk about the different stages of making a film is this yeah i think <laughs> okay um so so there's a few different ways films are made um the 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 one uh that you really want is when the broadcaster you you pitch an idea to a broadcaster and they say yes let's do it and they they give you most of the money which is great um <laughs> Yeah. Another way is an acquisition uh, where you've you've made the film already and the broadcaster gives you a bit of money to put it on the air. Uh, and of course, there's all sorts of, you know, amazingly now we have all these great technologies that you can just make a film like right now, if you wanted to, you can make a film and put it out there and put it in into the into the festival world or online. Um, but the first thing you do is usually you um, do a little bit of research and you develop what's called a pitch. Um, so, you know, it's a usually like a one or two page document um, and then a brief verbal, um, what we call an elevator pitch. So the way you're going to talk about it to people. Um, so you work on that, you practice that, 
selling, you're basically selling people your idea. Mm -hmm. um, you try to get it funded through broadcasters um, and other, mostly broadcasters, honestly, uh, and, and grants. Um, there's lots of those, well, there's a medium amount of those, <laughs> um, but you try to get it funded. Uh, if a broadcaster is a little bit interested in your idea, they'll give you a little bit of money to do something called development, which is mostly um, more research. You're, you're going back to your characters and your subjects and you're learning more about them and you're maybe shooting a little footage about them. You're making a real plan for what your film is going to look like. And then you go back to the broadcaster and say, hey, this is what we actually think it's going to look like. And, uh, you know, hopefully they're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Let's do it. <laughs> and they're like, here's more money. Um, not always. And usually I can say, like, maybe 10% of our ideas get, uh, I, maybe less, 5% of our ideas will get funded. So we do, like, pitch a lot, and we get a lot of no's. And that's totally standard. And I think, you know, from what I understand about the acting world, you audition a lot, and you... <laughs> that's what I, I was going to say. Like, there's a lot of crossover... Canada, at least, in all of the arts. Like, mm -hmm. Hearing you mm -hmm. describe that process, I can totally relate as an actor. I'm sure writers can relate. Anyone yeah. work or project? I mean, interestingly, scientists also have a very similar, um, from what we understand, a similar, you know, they're applying for grants. They, you know, you often get turned down. Like, it's just a part of the game. Like, you just have to keep applying and hope, you know, <laughs> keep up the stamina. Um, so after, you know, if they say yes, you go into production, uh, well, a period of pre-production, which is more planning, um, and then production, which is the actual filming and the super fun part. But by this point, you've probably already put, you know, a year or two of your, of your time into this project. Um, so depending on your project, um, documentaries, you know, it's all over the map how long you can shoot a documentary. You know, some people will follow their subject for like five years, 10 years, mm -hmm. you know. So documentaries have this weird, crazy lifespan um, for striking balance. The season we just made, which was a nine, nine hour series. I think we were in production for roughly three years. <laughs> so that's over many many seasons because often we're following an experiment or we're you know seeing what happens with you know oh if we remove this uh, beaver dam what happens next year uh, um, um so yeah i think it took about three years and then we were in post-production for a year and a bit i think covid jumped in there so i think my timelines might be a bit off but yeah i would say it's not uncommon for a, a documentary to take you know three-ish years um you know if you're just doing a feature even something like that um but again when i'm talking about a nine hour show i just did which is like ridiculous uh <laughs> but but yeah lots, lots of time yeah like to think of that in like for nine hours like a nine episode show that's mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours yeah i mean we're again this is going back to us being a bit weirdos that we like to do everything ourselves um so it is so possible to do it in much shorter time and we're seeing that you know you see these documentaries on covid that obviously <laughs> they've done much faster um so it totally depends on you know where you know i i guess that's the good thing about documentaries that it's it it can be shaped how you want it to be shaped mm -hmm. um so if you want to be part of uh you know the kind of doc making that happens really quick and spicy and your your only job is to um is to direct. You just want to be a director. You don't want to deal with all that other stuff. Um, you can do that. But if you want to, you know, shape the entire film and be part of shaping the whole thing. And if you're a technical person that loves like, you know, all the, the color and doing all those other things, like you can do that. Um, so it is kind of cool because it's a, it's pretty flexible. Um, you know, at the same time, I can say that, um, you know, as documentary filmmakers and public television, um, we often also take on little side projects to, you know, pay us <laughs> in the meantime um, while something is in production. So often we'll do a bunch of little projects while we're working on this really big thing, um, which also helps our brains like, okay, take a break from like, oh, we've, we've been thinking about fish for three years. We need to stop thinking about fish for like 10 minutes. Um, so, so often, you know, you have this really long timeline, um, but you'll, do other things and you know kind of still get out there with other smaller projects um you know and uh i mean i think i think we've been i've been doing this for 
15 ish years, 15, 20 years. <laughs> Terrifying. Um, but like, you know, we don't do it so much anymore, but some of, um, I say we talk about my, my partner, Zach, um, you know, some of our earliest stuff, you know, we, we did with Mary making fiction films while we were making our own documentary films, you know, at the same time. Um, and we did a lot of corporate work to kind of also, you know, build up our, we, we, uh, we're also weirdos in that we have our own gear, um, which, you know, a lot of people don't own their own equipment. They rent equipment for, for making dots, which is totally fine. Um, but often we're like, literally in the middle of a swamp <laughs> or something, you know, 10 hours from anywhere. Um, so, so we found it easier just to have our own gear and then we always have it for those weird times when we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Cause a lot of our work is um, focused on the natural environment and rural environments. So we're, we're not spending a whole lot of time in cities. We're, um, I could say this too, I guess maybe, <laughs> sorry, see, people love talking about what they're interested in. Uh, <laughs> um, I could say too that um, uh, we, just because of the way we work and uh, the kind of content we are following, uh, we spent a lot of time, not this past year, of course, but uh, driving around the country in our van. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we'll spend, you know, when we're going crazy on production, we'll be on the road for maybe half the year kind of thing. Um, so that's not all year. Uh, and that's certainly not all the time. And it really depends on the project. But, um, you know, we definitely have adventures and spend a lot of time in our van, <laughs> which is a much nicer van than we historically had. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, we, uh, we spend a lot of time on the road for the kind of work that we do. And yeah, have weird adventures. <laughs> weird adventures that like result in extraordinary things but it's also like just i'm exhausted hearing everything that goes into this. what keeps you coming back to documentary filmmaking what keeps you coming back to this you know yeah <laughs> i mean uh i don't know how to do other things at this point like really <laughs> my only skills are in this uh this world but yeah. It also, I mean, the, the fabulous thing about documentaries is you can make a documentary about whatever is your jam, you know? Like, mm -hmm. we, we like, my partner and I, uh, oh, hi, Victoria. Uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, like, are legitimately interested in, you know, sustainability, you know, humans as part of conservation. Um, so because these are things we care about and, you know, think there are, you know, some of these communities have some answers that could help other communities. Like we are in it. We are, you know, we're working on it. We do have a stupid schedule when we're working. We work, you know, and we're another reason we're weirdos. Like we work, you know, evenings and weekends and all the rest, but it's because we legitimately care about it. And mm -hmm. the other thing is that like, once you've started engaging people um, to tell their stories, you've made a commitment to them that you are actually going to do this and you have to finish it <laughs> because they have given you their time and their story. Um, and if you don't, if you don't finish, like that's rough, man, like that, that's, that's not cool. <laughs> so, so we are, we are committed to like the people that we have promised, Hey, we're going to make this thing. We're going to put all of our time in to do it. Um, and that's because we care about it. And we think that what they're doing is also important. Um, mm -hmm. And it's super lame because it's maybe a bit lame, but our, our shows being about the environment, we always point towards something hopeful as part of our shows because we think that what the people that were, whose stories we're sharing do have, um, you know, are sharing something that other communities and other in individuals can use to, to improve their communities. Um, because what we, we have seen over and over, this is becoming a conservation talk. Um, but, 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 but what we've seen over and over is that conservation happens from the grassroots. When it when it's mandated, it it's it it's so tough. Um, so if the communities are doing it, and that's a lot of the conservation stories we're telling, community driven, individual driven conservation, um, it works. Um, not always, of course, but you know when 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 it's and that's what we love is, as filmmakers, right? People telling stories that they think are important and make a difference. Um, so 
when all those things come together, that's when we get something like, you know, striking balance, <laughs> which hopefully is a hopeful thing uh, that other communities can draw from to, to make, uh, make changes in their communities. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful program. Um, you, I hope you're proud of it. <laughs> it's so hard to, I mean, I guess this is another thing about filmmaking, which I'm sure you know, uh, Mary, being in films, um, it's so hard to have perspective, you know, after you've, lived with this thing for several years and then it goes out into the world um yeah which you know makes things like the csa uh nomination kind of exciting because it's like oh right we weren't this crazy you know basement dwellers making this thing for three years um people actually think we're onto something so yes. so that's yeah kind of a, a cool thing yeah now i would be remiss if i didn't ask when you're talking about caring for other people's stories caring you know and pushing yourself to remain accountable what about your own care <laughs> epically bad at that mary i can be totally honest to say that uh that uh self-care you know when you're when you're in production especially like you know <laughs> i feel like you you know all about this but um when you're in production it's really tough to you know, make yourself take breaks. Like you could be, you know, you should, you know, you're here in this, this place, you know, why, why wouldn't you, <laughs> you know, go out and be filming all the time? You know, you're spending so much money to be here, but it, mm -hmm. it's definitely been a challenge throughout our, all, all of the time I've worked on film is making us, and because it's, you know, we're not part of a bigger group usually. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's just us. So it's, oh, we're like, oh, we might as well just go and keep filming, keep filming, keep filming, keep filming. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, it's definitely something that we really struggle with. Um, and, you know, even in post, because it's, you know, you're uh, post-production when you're putting everything together, um, you know, you're always behind, of course. <laughs> so, you know, you, 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 it's really easy just to get into a group where you're just constantly pushing. Um, and that's, you know, honestly, something we really need to work on and are trying to work on. And, you know, hopefully you're getting better at it with, with experience. But uh, yeah, uh, I think, you know, as you, as you make bigger and bigger projects, um, you kind of, the stakes are greater. So you, you, you keep, just pushing yourself just as hard. So yeah, I, I mean, it's tough. It's really tough. It's, uh, yeah. I, I appreciate your so much in that. I think during the pandemic, a lot of folks have found them working at, have struggled with that same thing. For example, mm -hmm. well, I'm here, I might as well be working. I might as well push myself to do more. To get yeah. But hopefully you'll be here as you're, light on environmental issues and sustainability you'll also be able to shine like to work on your own <laughs> yes well i mean i think i think we are getting a little bit better at it and because you know a lot of our work when we're at home when we're not doing production we are working out of our our home office mm -hmm. and yeah we really have to be um committed to doing things like you know leaving the house every day and like but we really have to hold ourselves to account to actually do those things so that we don't feel like garbage because honestly you know the work suffers as well in the end i think as everybody knows um if you're feeling like garbage you're not going to produce anything creative and gorgeous you're you're just going to phone it in so we 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 definitely like have been working i mean for years on trying to like ensure that we're we're doing those things and that we're um, yeah, being committed to, to, to taking care of ourselves so that we, we make good work. But, uh, yeah, it's a struggle. It's definitely a struggle for sure. Well, you're not, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, we're running to the end of our chat, but I suppose I wanted to ask about story and, you know, what draws you, you talked about being in love with people who are in love with what they do. But for you, what are some of the stories you want to chase in the future? What are you passionate about, like beyond what you've done? So <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I am legitimately interested in conservation mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the natural world. Um, in, can in <laughs> a lot of our, our work is very Canadian, uh, but. I'm, I'm really interested in what we can, we can be doing ourselves in our own backyards and what other communities are doing. So this is, you know, something that, that really interests me. Um, 
and is why I spend years doing a project on such things. Um, I mean, I guess, yeah, with, with story, I think part of it too is that the more, the more films you make, the more work you do, you do get better at recognizing like what can be a good story and what will evolve into a good story. Um, it's always nice to be surprised when you're working on something and, you know, it takes a turn and you're like, oh, we have to adjust and do something different. Um, but I think a lot of, you know, just experience with filmmaking is, you know, recognizing, you know, what what's going to be a good story and where it's going to go. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So no magic wand thing. If I gave you like all the money to do any project in the world you want to work on. Oh, that would be... I mean, we're working on, we, we don't have uh, anything uh, publicly available yet, but we are working on, uh, you know, what's next after Striking Balance right now to see, uh, you know, every every time we make a film, we we try to go bigger um, and have, uh, you know, more <laughs> more funds, you know, cooler cameras, bigger stories. Mm -hmm. um, so we are, we are hopefully working up to, uh, to uh, something bigger and better. Um, but yeah, I think it would always always be something conservation-y and uh uh you know just the natural world so great being outside and if you can do that with with other people who are who are keen on it know something about the natural you know what you're, <laughs> what you're looking at uh, who are going to show you cool animals who are going to show you you know cool things about the environment like it's just as much of a discovery for us when we're out there with people as it is for our viewers who get to watch you know these these pretty amazing places so um, you know, we, we know it's like a real, it's a real pr privilege to be able to do this kind of work and to, to be out there. Um, you know, that being said, we, we did spend a lot of time, uh, putting in our, putting in our time with, uh, you know, corporate videos and whatnot. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it might, if you're thinking about getting into documentary, it might take you a little bit to get there, but, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll get there. <laughs> well, you, you said something once, which I, I've never forgotten. You said, and you mentioned too at the beginning, like, these are days where we can tell so many different ways. You can use your phone to shoot something. Mm -hmm. um, and quality is important. Know how to shape the story and matters. But I remember you saying, like, at the heart of it, it really is the story. And oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, of course, we, you know, now, now we're, we're very lucky that we have all these fancy cameras and cool rigs and drones and blah, blah, blah. But, like, that doesn't matter at all. Like what matters is that story and really, you know, having, having great characters or people in the story to share it. Um, and, and just under, yeah, understand the shape of your story. It's ups and downs, making sure there are ups and downs, but you know, he, you know, <laughs> big fancy directors are shooting things on iPhones. Right. So, mm -hmm. so it really, you know, none of that matters. Um, what matters is that, is that amazing story. Um, so if there's, there's someone with an amazing story in your life, you know, you can just make something and you know, even, even just something small, like two, five minutes, you know, you can, you can, you can share that story <laughs> with whatever you have. We all have phones now, right? So, so, you know, you, you can totally, um, yeah, make an amazing doc without, you know, fancy gear worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like that's, that's not a requirement. <laughs> That's amazing. And even if you tell, if you make a doc with all that fancy stuff and the story's not good, you know, you're going to be told <laughs> by the people who are giving you money that it's not great <laughs> and you need to work on it. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Any, are there any last kind of shout outs you want to give or words of wisdom? Uh, yeah, I yeah, I, I think it does all point to, if you're thinking about making documentaries, just start making something <laughs> with your with your phone with whatever you've got there's all sorts of free editing apps now as well like just start learning about story i i think that's that's the most critical and important thing and like every time we make a show we learn something about how to tell a good story and i think every every show hopefully hopefully uh we've advanced in that in that capacity as well so just start start thinking about what makes a good story and just try to make something, anything, basically. <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank you so much for being here and chatting with me today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always lovely to talk to you, Mary. We love always it. Love Maybe we'll do this again one day. <laughs> <laughs> after our next show in three to five years. <laughs> and after all the, all the awards that are coming your way. 
<laughs> we'll see about that, but it's a pleasure to be nominated. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Yvonne. You have a good day. Say hello to Zach for me. Will do. Will do. Hi, Anthony. Bye, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you again. All okay. right. Thanks, Ray. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Wow. Okay, folks. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much to Yvonne Drabert of uh, Lock3 Media and, of course, Striking Balance TV. And congratulations again on your Canadian Screen Award nomination. That's so awesome. And I, my fingers are crossed. It's so worthy. It's so deserving of that kind of recognition. So I'll be watching. I'll be watching on the night, keeping an eye out. Um, but in the meantime, folks, if you're interested in telling stories, what a beautiful thing to hold on to. Just that idea of it's a story that counts. It's the passion that your, the people involved in your project have. Again, kind of bringing it back to the archive uh, philosophy of dream big, start small. You don't need a lot of fancy stuff. If what you're telling, the story you're telling is meaningful and true and impactful, just be true to that story. And who knows what will happen? So again, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you to Yvonne, to Lock3, to Zach, to everybody out there. Striking Balance TV on TV Ontario. Again, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm just happy to be here. So thank you for joining me. And until we can connect and create again with one another in person, I look forward to creating and connecting with you right here online. We'll see you again next Tuesday at 1, 1 p.m. for another artist chat. And again, virtual archives every Wednesday on the Living Rooms Facebook page. Take care, folks. Stay safe. Keep creative. And see you soon. Bye.